given a peculiar phrase of intelligent beings, and we have, we're given taste buds for a reason, for a reason. If food doesn't taste good, you shouldn't eat it. Mm -mm. It's not good. We went to school and they told us about condiments, dressings, and sugar. You can put on this dead, nasty food and make it taste good. And it's not good for us. Your taste buds really communicate well. And when food doesn't taste good, you should not eat it because it isn't good. Well, this stuff, <laughs> your taste buds are saying, like, this is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is real good. Because it is. It's not lying to you. <laughs> and look how massive your beets are. Oh, do you want you? Does anybody have a knife? You have a knife? I do. I do. Oh, cool. <laughs> Everybody get ready for some awesome experience here. Oh my goodness. You want to pull that beat right there? Oh yeah. Here. Let's go ahead and pull it. See how nice it comes out of the ground. Shake that off. Walk over to the grass. Wipe it off. We'll cut the top and the bottom off and then we're going to slice it. I want you to see them. Right there as hard as you can. Get with it. Get on. Okay, now, now. now, after you've done that, watch this. Uh, this cannot be compacted. So why would I kill? You know what happens when you till the ground? You break up all the... No, you don't break up anything. It's like all gets hard again. So what you do is you kill every living organism in the soil. And there's thousands. All those living organisms, you see worms are the biggest? They have their babies and homes there. And when you kill, you kill them. Let me explain to you why foods are bitter. So I asked the creator, he, should, he shares with me. Mm -hmm. And I want to learn my body language. When plants grow in compacted, hard, minimal soil, they're struggling trying to live. Because it's hard to push roots into that hard, compacted stuff. And so they're expressing in their flavor mm. their bitterness. Mm. They had a bitter life. Mm. Conversely, when plants in this stuff, there's no resistance. They just, oh, they grow really quick. They're tender and sweet because they grew fast. Mm -hmm. No resistance. Their life was sweet. Mm. I'm just telling you, all of nature oh. is clearly communicating how they live. It's huge. And wow. we should, as intelligent beings, should get it. When something is bitter, it had a hard life. Mm. It's not good. When stuff's sweet, it's how it's supposed to be. This is how it's made. The Creator made everything sweet. It's not mean. It's really good. He made it really good for us. Only humans make it tough. Yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> bitter. Yeah, nothing in nature does. It's only us that does things. Yeah. You got it. Wow. Now, there's soil. <laughs> Look at this. Finer. Awesome. It's a lot finer Look, than... Look. Because I ran it through a sprinkler. You see this? He's act look at that stuff. I want you to all I want I want you to I want you to smell it. Yeah, I want to smell some of that. Now that odor you're smelling is the odor of minerals. And if you go to organic farms that raise your food, you pick up their soil, there is no odor. Because there's no minerals. There's no minerals. And the beauty of this this is all created from my yard waste. All my expired plants, all my weeds. All my grass clippings, all the ashes I've sold, all go to my chickens. They eat what they want, they turn it back to this. How many now chickens is this? Is totally recycled. How come this isn't just full of weeds? I mean, weeds love because this Because kind I of don't soil. water. Oh. You see, if you don't water, you're not going to have weeds. Okay. And weeds are a response to poor soil. The Always. Weeds just come to heal the soil. And, and what else are a response so to is exposed to soil. It. But it rains. See, nothing in nature is yeah, exposed. Yeah, it rains. Nothing in nature is exposed. True. And when, as soon as you till the soil, what happens immediately? Weeds come in to recover the ground because the ground's not safe uncovered because it blows and washes away. And nature's trying to recover it, put a new cover over it. And you, and you, as soon as you till weeds happen, you should get it. This doesn't work. And you'd have thought the dust bowl would have woke us up. Right. Like, this is yeah. ineffective. This is dangerous. Uh -huh. But they're still tilling. They're yeah. not getting it. Yeah. This is yeah. not how you do it. Yeah. And nothing in nature is tilled anywhere. Everywhere in nature, there's a covering on the planet. Look the around at all the trees. The needles and leaves in the woods. Nothing's exposed. If we show up, I'm going to tame this. We're going to grow stuff. We rip the cover off, and what happens? Weeds come around, washes, and blows away. There's nothing hard to do. 
Yeah. And we're not getting it. We're stupid. We're not paying attention. Because in nature, there's no hard pan. Everything's going well. Right. It's across the board simple. It's really simple. Now, I've had a lot of beasts, and I love beasts. This has got to be one of the best. Yeah. You want to have a better one? Can I get to a better one? I mean... I'm, 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 I'm being real. I'm not lying to you. Of course I'm not I, got nothing, I got nothing to sell. <laughs> Who's got the knife again? Real good, though. Okay. Come over here. I'm going to give you a golden bean. Because they're over the top. Right over there. Go pull it. Pull that first one inside. Yeah. Come out with it. Now watch how nice it comes out of the ground. Is that cool? <laughs> I'm going to over here and wipe it off. And have them cut that one up and again ch check out the visual and then get ready for like oh come on you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> i'm still working on that pear ball <laughs> still working on it i know isn't it cool it's huge of course they are and they weren't thin right like i told you right oh you don't you never thin if you look at the density of fruit i have yeah they're not thin and they're huge you see, all the things that are us is from the default broken premise. Somebody's phone going off. This beat. Now open that up and show no. and, and, and expose what that looks like inside. Treasure. Wow. Look at that color. Golden beat. Now, now slice that up and eat it and get ready for that. Can you hold that up again real quick? I want to take a picture of that. Cool. It looks like a mango. It does look like a mango. Wow. <laughs> well, eat it. Slice it up and eat it and get ready for it. You thought that other one looked good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, everybody, you need it because this is really good. Here you go. Sweet. Thank you. It doesn't taste like a bean. It tastes like, like a bean. Almost like an apple. It's like clearing almost. Like it just gives me this sensation of like washing away. Like being, it feels really clean. I don't know how what else to describe that. Well, it is. Well, you're not stupid. <laughs> and the senses you're getting are real. Your body is not stupid. It's talking to you. It's saying, thank you. <laughs> this is nutrient <laughs> dense. I can make really good cells with this. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, yeah, I can clean house with this. This is like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Your body's not stupid. Are these from seed? Uh, everything, planted, everything, why, everything from seed. When did you plant these beets? These, these are planted like in, in May. Okay. Um, now here's what's really hilarious. Oh my God. You see these carrots here? Yeah. You know when they were planted? No, but the middle of July. Oh my God. Oh wow. Come, come, come look at the size. And pull. Oh, here's take a long time. Pull, pull that carrot as they come. Yeah, bring them on oh out. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that planted by seed the first, the, first. the second week in July. You just put the seed right in the ground. Yeah, now pull, bring that, bring those ones that would be pulled out, wipe them off of the grass here, and then run them by your nose. I want, I want you to see something amazing. Properties. Metabolic oh. properties. Oh wow! So track with me. This odor that you're experiencing right now, you'll never see in an organic mm -hmm. carrot in a store. Right, huh. even organic. Something's not there. It's been lost. Mm -hmm. That's why we're supposed to pick food and eat it. Not hours later. Yes. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And this right. is how all of nature huh. operates. All of. You want to see something cool? Take that carrot and give it my dog.
walk up to it and pick a leaf, take it off of the stem. Yeah. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Arugula, I mm. planted the first of September by seed. Wow. Look at the size of it. First of September. Oh my goodness. About five Delicious. Look at that. Look at how long those leaves are and how big that is. Look at that. That's arugula. In my in the garden at the house that I was at, they were like this big. That was their full growth. Wow. Cool. You want to have something really cool? Mm. Take cilantro over here and go down to the base and get the whole stem. Get some of the big stuff. Look how beautiful that is. Look how thick that is. <laughs> and then run it by your nose before you eat it. Oh, my word, Paul. It's not bitter. I told you. I know. It didn't have a hard life. Why should it be bitter? Ooh. Mm. It's like sharp. Smell that. Mm. It's like a... It's you've like never, you've wow. never had cilantro that smells like that in the store. Mm. Paul, this is now, almost like a, it's like a spice, almost like it a... It is spicy. It's, it's got, yeah. it's like it's, a pepper it's flavor. It's more potent than... Nutrients! Minerals are potent! <laughs> They're potent! They're really potent! They're good! Mm. See how awesome that cilantro tastes? Tastes, like. oh, tastes, tastes like? So you've, you've never had it right up from the store. So, do you, will you harvest a lot of this and save it for the winter? Or does I eat it all winter. It grows all I eat all winter. winter. All winter long. This, you see what's so cool about the cilantro? Track with me. You know cilantro bolts. Are you hearing me? You see how big this is and it's not bolting? You know why? Because it's cold now. Uh, the timing is so critical. This will feed me all winter long because it's not going to bolt because it's going to stay cold. It won't grow much, but look at the size. I'm good. That'll, that'll hold me for a while. Nice. So, so this is the, the, the timing is so wow. important to when you plant. So I plant all year, but boy, the September 1st planting is critical to have this amazing good stuff all winter. Mm. September 1st Perfect. is the last you can plant here, but look at that nice mm. little main lettuce. Yeah. Go snap off a leaf and taste how good that is. Mm. <laughs> okay. Brought to my attention, I'm not walking well, and I may not be able to, to haul wood chips in my garden for as long as I live. I'll get that. Oh, and so you told me that over there? Over there. Yeah, with yeah. the, with the yeah. sheep, sheep mm -hmm. and the dogs. He told me that where, where I'm living, I'm producing everything I need mm -hmm. right here locally. Mm -hmm. This is what's so huge. You're going you're to see my soil manufacturing plant here in a minute. That, that I'm losing my fence. I have like two and a half feet of this material in there. i got to get out, but my garden doesn't need it. But it's yeah. just, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm having this major challenge with abundance. <laughs> <laughs> Abundance is pushing me over the edge because I can't deal with it all. I'm just telling you, it's huge. So, if, and, and you see, all my yard waste all goes over there. See, the chickens eat all this stuff, mm -hmm. and they turn it back to this amazing soil. Mm -hmm. You see, all those weeds are nutrient dense, awesome food for my chickens. So, here's the irony about chicken food: grain. Ever look at a pheasant in nature? A That's pheasant. it. Yeah. How beautiful their feathers are. Effervescent, yeah. just shines bright. No chicken and any chicken can eat in grain looks like it. Mm -hmm. mm. Who's feeding the present grain? Excuse me. They get, they get some, very little, in the summer when grass is seeded all winter long, they have no grain. Yeah. And they're beautiful. Yeah. So, what I'm getting is that the creator didn't design grain for a major mm -hmm. diet, it was because no. of the birds. Mm. Right. And you'll see when you get to my chicken pen. You ever been to a chicken pen? They usually have an odor. Mm. When they do show up, they run to the fence because they want to get something because mm -hmm. they're hungry. Mm -hmm. you'll, see, you'll see when you get to my chicken pen today, there's no odor and my chickens will ignore you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's significant. So if, you, if you're they're starting... Satisfied and because and the, and the, there's no odor, the manure is so lo lost in the massive yard waste is one part per 10,000 oh. parts organic live waste. Here's the thing that's interesting to me, uh, that you, I want you guys to get this. When something stinks in your life, in your home, something stinks, what do you do about it? Clean it up. You correct it, because you can't live with it, it's not acceptable. In the culture you live in, 
If you ever go to chicken pens that raise your chicken, your eggs and meat, if you walk into them, you'll be choked by ammonia. Mm. Yes. If you go past feedlots that raise mm -hmm. the, the beef, you can't even breathe the air. It's so potent. And these animals spend their entire lives in that environment, and you're eating that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real with you. Real with you. This is how insane we become. Mm -hmm. We don't think. And see, nothing in nature stinks. See those sheep out there? They must have stinked right? because they're spread out. You look at flocks of you know, buffalo and some herds of horses. They stink. Mm -hmm. Just a movie. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of concentrating the animals in a small space is insane. It's not normal. It's not normal. But in our culture, with our PhD degrees, we think that's cool, and we're a fool. We can afford that. Mm. Oh, can we get any more brain damage? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. So if you're starting from scratch, let's say you want to put, you want a garden like this. You do. What's the first thing? You do? Wood chips. Just cover the wood chips. If you have grass, paper down to kill the grass because the grass is a great green mm -hmm. material you want to lose. And paper will, when it gets wet, will suffocate it, turn mm -hmm. back to dirt. Mm -hmm. Put wood chips over. This is a perfect time of year in fall, like the crater does. In the spring, you pull the wood chips back. You access the soil, which is very soft and damp and full of worms and life. Plant your seeds up as the plants come up. Move wood chips around your plants, and you're good. Mm -hmm. Go take a vacation. Go visit your friends. Mm -hmm. Go talk on the phone because your garden no longer needs you. Take mm -hmm. care of itself. If you notice in nature, mm -hmm. track with me, no one ever shows up to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're laughing, but I'm being real. That's real, yeah. Everything is beautiful out there year round, and no one shows up to work. What's up with us? We work so hard to fail, it's pathetic. Mm. Mm. We work hard to fail. We're mm. out there, no one's working, and it's going great. Mm. And, and again, all the lies were told. Let's just run, run them by you. In nature, the soil is never, never, ever disturbed. And we tell. In nature, there's no crop rotation. Plants go to seed in the same place every year. They drop their seeds year after year. Decade after decade, century, and they go fine. Mm -hmm. In nature, no one's weeding. Mm -hmm. There's no weeds in nature. In nature, no one's fertilizing. Mm -hmm. Fertilizing. No fertilizing is going on in nature. Yeah. And no one's watering. Yeah. Are you starting to connect with us? Mm -hmm. All the insane things we do, labor intensive, expensive, if there's no example of nature, that going on. Mm -hmm. And nature's producing a very beautiful landscape. Mm -hmm. Yes. Far nicer than the stuff that we do with all that stuff we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Are we stupid? <laughs> I'm just being real. Yeah. It's so obvious how we're not paying attention. Mm. And we're, here's, here's the thing that I'm seeing that the Creator, everything He made is free, it's unlimited, and non toxic. Conversely, everything you're buying is expensive, <laughs> limited, and toxic. Mm. Connect the dots. Oh. Let's go see your compost factory. What's that? Let's go see your compost factory. Okay, let's before we get there, I'm, let me show you if you if, if you guys think you have a hard soil to deal with. If, if, you, if you think you have difficult here. soil, let me show you what my soil looks like. Because this is all covered. Let me show you what this is a time this is this is amazing. See I'm on a slope here. Slopes are an amazing asset. You see all the life that's happening here in the orchard? I mean, again, look, look at my orchard. Look at all the food that's going on in amongst my trees. Look at all those squash out there. If you saw that, you walk out here, the banana squash. Look at all these potatoes here. This is all growing in my trees. Then all this is growing quite well. So after all these plants take out all the life force in the soil to feed themselves, after they're all done, the excess feeds into my pasture to put it on the ground. The pasture this size will support six sheep. There's eight out there. I've had as many as 53 in here, mm -hmm. and they've never got my grass down, ever. Wow. And what I want you to get is, this costs me nothing, and after it feeds all of this in this kind of abundance, in this kind of good flavor, the excess, the overflow, feeds all that. Oh, wow. This is the overflow. Nice. This, I'm just telling you, man, nature is crazy. It's like over the top. Awesome. And we're not getting it. We're not realizing all we've been given totally free. It just is superior to anything you can buy. It's like, come on, get it.
you, you, you'll never see anything like this in the store. I don't care how many organic certified labels they put on yeah. it. It'll never be this. I didn't do anything. This is all recycled from my yard. Wood chips from trees. Free. Created nature. Non-toxic. I mean, it just doesn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get another picture with you upon yeah. your garden? Sure. Okay. Look like this time of year. Yes. They are nice. And you see this? <laughs> yes. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'm just yeah. real. Yeah. Most gardens this time of year are all yellow, totally right. worn out, looking like it's so worn out. Yeah. How long ago was that? <laughs> this is not looking oh, that way. Two, okay. This is not saying we're done. There's, there's hope. <laughs> not even close. I mean, there's some squash. This is like, we're thriving and we look good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when do your plums ripen? Oh, they're all over. I know, but when they're all over. Oh, I have. Three varieties, they happen all different times. These are just very, some, in, some in, in late spring and some in summer, some in fall. Late spring, yeah, that early. Oh, I get the, the one is awesome, it's called um, Beauty. It's a beautiful purple plant. That thing gets just like ripe like in June. Wow. It's awesome. Okay. So variety, and again, you want to have stuff spread out, so don't, you know, you know so, and, and, the, and the sun will go from different seasons, so, because when your plums come out, you can't eat them all. No way, this could come in like, mm -hmm. well, they don't last long, so. So spread them out so they have come in different different seasons. And you have a perpetual growing season though mm -hmm. here we're, where we're, we are. This is, a, this is a nice place because the average temperature is 50 degrees year round. Yeah, yeah. It's never hot, never really cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, 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 an, ideal. an ideal place to live. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the air quality, look at that sky. Yeah. And if, you, if you guys haven't had any, if you want to drink water right over there by that. There's a drinking fountain. My water is 7.3. It's alkaline. 7.3. It's coming out of the glaciers and Olympics, and it is uh, delicious. You should, you, yep. you should taste it. And there's, you never in Minnesota anything that good. The spring yep. or well. Are you from Minnesota? I'm no, from they, Minnesota, they, yeah. they, they are. I was raised in Minnesota. I actually do have higher alkaline water. I'm, I have a machine that generates uh, the alkalinity up to as high as 9.0. Condon? Okay. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's okay if you live in the city. Yep. But I don't need it. You don't need it. No, I'm not saying you need it, but <laughs> I, think, I think it's awesome. The water yeah. the body, and again, though. the, the condom makes it a smaller, a smaller molecule, so it's, it's, it's wetter, so you absorb yes. it better. So yes. it's, it's, my wife has one. She I does. never use it. Uh -huh. I, I, all this stuff that people say is good, I've tried to have absolutely no benefit. Okay. You know, but you have to do it for six she, months. She has it. She has it because she's a midwife. Okay. And she brings women in here who need help. Yes. And so she has it for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because my sister is. Her, her husband had a severe case of fibromyalgia and was completely cured by water. The high alkaline water. Well, again, yeah, all disease, and I want you guys to remember this all disease is the effect of malnutrition. All of it. Mm. All of it. If you are eating well, you can't get sick. It's impossible. Mm. So if you're sick, it's because you're malnutrition. You're not getting nutrient, the, the necessary nutrients in your food. Really? And you, I don't know if you're aware of, you know, the, the international Market agency, the yeah. international agency that controls all food that comes to market, international, sure. are totally committed to making sure that nothing coming to the store will have any nutritional value. Mm. <laughs> They're committed to that. Mm. Yeah. They're who, committed. who is committed to that? The, the international agency that's, that controls all food that comes to the marketplace, including healthy stores. And the reason is they want to reduce population. No. Too many people well, control. Is truth to that, yeah. And the second thing is, is they want you dependent on pharmaceuticals uh -huh. and doctors. It's all about money. Mm. So we're coming to a time of space. For, I want you, because you guys are young and you're going to be powerful. We're coming to a time where it's going to become essential to grow your own food. Because nothing in the soil will be safe to eat. If you're going to have health, you're going to have to grow your own food. There won't be an option. That's what I'm hearing. I'm being real. Yeah. And for the last 6,000 years of human history, Everyone grew all their own food. The Industrial Revolution changed, but that's very recent. It's not long. And if you look at the health on the, the planet today, mm -hmm. the health of the human race has never been this bad for 6,000 years of recorded human history. Ever. Ever been this bad. The diabetes, heart disease, cancers, epidemic. All these kids with these autoimmune diseases that weren't, didn't exist 10 years ago are all coming on them. This is a result of... Um, Food with, with no nutrition and immunization from vaccination. This is all being done to us. It's not. It's not accidental. 
Wow. I'm being real. Pay attention to what's going on. Look around you. This <laughs> is not normal. All these little kids you see. All these all you do didn't even exist ten years ago. Didn't have names for them. They all have it. Immunization, vaccinations, is a gift. That's all I have to tell you. I took a uh, class with Kabbalah. Oh, my daughter. Yeah. She's my youngest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was in uh, the ethnobotany class with her <laughs> last year. Mm -hmm. You're from Minnesota, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What part? St. Paul. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Down in, well, prior to life. Yeah, I grew up in Bloomington. When I got back Ooh. to Vietnam, I had a friend living with me in Minneapolis. I love St. Paul, Minneapolis. You see squirrels going across the streets. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. everywhere. It's beautiful. You know? Very natural. Yeah. And I used to be afraid of heights, mm -hmm. and I got over it, mm -hmm. went to the St. Croix River, and jumped off those rocks, 35, oh 65, 85 foot in the river, Taylor's Fall. and I got totally over the fear of heights. Oh, that huh. would do it. It, it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. Nice. So I, I love Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you two doing out here? Came to sleep off. Mm. Are you family? Yeah, he's no. my son. Mm. Oh, Gilf, okay. oh, yeah, Mike. Not with Paul, no. We're uh -huh. brothers they, in the Lord. Did you guys you <laughs> see the film back to Eden? Um, I didn't oh. get a chance to see it yet. You, should, you can watch it on the internet for free. It's backeden.film.com. Back to Eden. Nice. Yeah, definitely and, worthwhile. And that film has people come here from all over the world every Sunday from the beginning of June to the end of about September. Anywhere from 20 to 60 people from all over the world because of that film. It's been seen by Never multiple wait. millions in, two, in, in 200, over 200 countries. Wow. It came out five years ago. And they're now translated into 18 languages because of their man. Wow. wow. Amazing. And what's so cool about it is the girls who made it never made a film before. Yeah. And had no advertising. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's I'll, the I'll, word. I'll, I'll tell you why, though. There's, there's a reason. Yeah. It has God's favor in this Amen. 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 There's something about that spiritual realm. I yeah. believe that. That just told, and, and, and I think why, why people are attracted to it. Because everything's free, you can see it for free, and I'm selling well, and nothing. Well, and like you said, you can see it. You can't yeah. dispute it. it looks and again, happy. everybody's trying to sell you something. This is all free. Yeah. You see, that's the nature mm. of the Creator. He gave everything free, mm. and I think I think it touches people's hearts mm. more than their heads. Mm. Mm. That was me. So uh, we didn't get to touch. You, you came late. I was showing everyone there. If you go to if you go to college. Mm -hmm. Like you've been, mm -hmm. they'll tell you that wood products type might make your soil acidic. Are you following me? Yes. Oh, you you notice the, the color of green of my kale and the trees okay. in the wood chips? Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time finding a nitrogen type. Hmm. Are you? You have a nitrogen type, things are yellow. Mm. Miracle Grow, I don't care at what level you will never make it in that green. That's true. And that's growing in wood chips, exclusive wood chips. So nitrogen type is a lie. Other things that lie is they tell you the, the, the pH is acid. I showed them over here earlier. I have a hydrangea mm -hmm. growing my wood chips in hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. if, you, if your soil is acid, the flowers are blue. Mm -hmm. If your soil is alkaline, they're pink. Mm -hmm. All summer long, my hydrangea had at the same time pink and blue flowers. Oh, well. You know why? <laughs> the pH is 7.0. Totally centered. Mm -hmm. And at center, both colors happen. I love the creator. He made it so perfect. It's perfect. Here's another classic illustration. You see over here? You see that lavender plant? Mm -hmm. You know what pH lavender requires? No. They know. Tell me. Lavender, what kind of flow? Acid or alkaline? Lavender, that's the alkaline. Alkaline, yeah. high alkaline. Oh, really? Blueberry. What do blueberries want? Blueberry needs uh, acid. Very you see, low. You see them both growing side yeah. by side there? They're touching? Yep, I see them. What? <laughs> right here in front of us. They're touching. And neither one looks bad. <laughs> wow. 7.0 is awesome. If it okay. was alkaline, if it's center, everybody's happy. Do you see the wisdom of the Creator, how He made everything so perfect? See, when you try to adjust pH and soil, you have to always do it, it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. So you're always doing it. Mm -hmm. In the wood chips, well, look, at, look at the foliage, look at the color foliage of that blueberry behind that bench. So beautiful. Look how dark 
green and healthy that is. You see what's growing there? Wood chip. Nothing but wood chip. <laughs> and it's never been watered or fertilized. Mm. You see those fig trees? They're beautiful. I live in a place where figs don't grow. Yeah, wait, what? I love figs. <laughs> they don't grow here, but I get figs every year. Nice. I'm just, and you, saw, you, didn't see, you, see, you see straight by the barn there, you see all that massive light green? Yeah. Those are grapes. Mm. That's a grapevine. Nice. It's 20, over 20 feet long. Oh, wow. It's thriving. Nice. I grew good grapes from it. You, you can't grow grapes here. Yeah. It's so fun. You know the time? Um, I yeah, don't. It's 5 o'clock, 5 10. I have to drive back to Olympia tonight. Do you want to leave? So I think I want to, yeah, get going on the road soon. Okay. Well? Go to my chicken pen, mm -hmm. look in it, at my soil manufacturing plant, see how that how deep the soil is. Uh -huh. And on your way, uh -huh. you want a you want a incredible sweet experience. Yeah. You set fennel right there, yeah. growing the strawberries, pick some of that foliage, the, the fern and eat it, uh -huh. and get ready for the biggest sugar sugar shock you've had in your life. You okay, you're gonna you're gonna be amazed if you had fennel before you've never had it that sweet. Space. White, in the desert. White sage. In the desert. You kind see that beautiful white sage plant right there? Mm -hmm. Check out how healthy and nice it is. That looks well to you? Yeah. It looks lush. So happy. That grows in desert with no water. You following me? Mm-hmm. You recognize the plant in front of it in a, in a row there, in front of the blueberries? In front of the blueberries. Do you recognize that plant? Mm -mm. No one does. Do you know why? Because no one can grow it. That's wasabi. Oh. <laughs> you know what wasabi grows in nature? <coughs> in standing water in full shade. This is in full sun, getting See, no water, and it's wasabi. growing right mm -hmm. next to sage, which grows in deserts. <laughs> wow. Really? It is wool. Is that why you planted it next to each other? No, this has happened, but you know, I, I, I had asked a critic because my brain couldn't wrap around the extremes of water climate side by side. You told me it blew me away. Okay. He said, the, you got to hear this. Mm -hmm. this. This plant also grows in, in Israel, in the mm -hmm. desert. There's enough airspace in the wood chip for the sage to hang out in open spaces and avoid the water. But if the wasabi wants the water, they can go where, it, uh. go where it is, but they have the option. And what I got in the wood chip environment, Everything is there. Everything any plant needs is there, and they can choose. Mm. The plant it's huge. Them. The plant chooses. Look at that. Yes. Go pick a leaf of that wasabi. It's awesome. It's not as hot as the root, but as you know, you'll know it's wasabi. It's an amazing flavor. So what is the soil composition here versus over there? It's all wood chips. Mm -hmm. uh, all it's all incredible. wood chips. Mm -hmm. that. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm. Mm. It's wasabi. Sage. Can I pick a... Yeah. And this, this sage was planted was planted in a four inch pot. This wow. Spring. Yeah, that's wasabi. That's wasabi. And wasabi only grows in standing what? water in full shade. The commercial growers grow it under black cover hydroponically. Wow. This has been growing in full sun for six years out here huh. with no irrigation ever. This is the worst time of the year. In, in January, it's totally blooming. White flowers just gorgeous. This is one through you know drought summer, but it's phenomenal. And wow. it's growing right next to white sage. Side by side. Mm -hmm. And this plant right there comes from Israel. That's another desert plant. It's thriving. Beautiful. Did you check out the chicken odor? Mm -hmm. You see that amazing? You see where they dig down there? You see how, and you see, you see how you, you see how low it is? This, this is all herbs. All herbs. Okay. And you see how much lower that is? There? You see like there's two and a half feet of that stuff in my garden that I gotta get out. So does someone go in there and dig I that? I do. I, I, I see a screen on the, on the, on the chicken window. Mm -hmm. I use that as a screen, and I shovel it in the wheelbarrow, and I screen it, and I take it to my garden. Nice. So what I want you to see is that everything I need for that kind of production <laughs> is happening right here, <coughs> all recycled <coughs> by my chickens, who give me eggs as a bonus. Wow. So see, in a typical garden, you have a composting bin, and you're chopping stuff up, and you're breaking up, and you're turning it. I just throw it all in there and they do all that work and they eat the food, they get the nice eggs, and they turn it back to that awesome soil, I do no work. So you started to notice all these steps that I don't do everybody else does? Yeah. It makes it so much easier. Easier. Look at that nice hedge of blueberries and that hedge. You've got tons of blueberries off there. It's beautiful. It's supposed to be. Yeah. Strawberries? 
a shame you gotta go because I can tell you how to do those without ever looking. Mm. Well, Strawberries. Oh. Yeah. This is something you'll never get out of a book. This is huge. They send out runners. Yes. And over time your bed gets very, very thick and dense. The challenge yes. is, is the noodles on top is what you want to keep because that's producing berries. So you got to get underneath and thin. So I'm doing that. I'm, I'm talking to Chris and I was, God, you told me your yolk was easy, your burden's like, this isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you approach it? He says, just bury it. So what I do in the fall, how's your strawberry look in the fall winter? It's all brown. It's ugly. So under the wood chips, it's not brown and ugly. You don't see anything. It's all looking nice. You can walk on it. Mm. And here's the beauty of the creator. Under the cover, the wood chips, the foliage becomes compost and feeds the plant. And in spring, totally staggered, just the young shoots come pushing through, not crowded. Oh, so and all the old ones, because they can't push through the wood chips, they're too weak, die and become fertilizer. And you never have to thin. I want you to, you have good shoes. I want you to watch this guy. Walk full weight on my strawberries, like this. Like, don't, don't be lightweight, just walk full weight right across. Full weight, come on. Oh, oh, oh. I want you to step on the plant. Oh, okay. I want you to. Okay. Please. Yes. Come back. Okay. You've had how many tours of people yeah. doing that? Uh, every week. <laughs> okay. L look where you were. Yeah. You can't even tell. Can't tell. But they got smashed. It's so, so hardy. Nice. Be because the wood chips underneath give oh. air space, buoyancy, and you're not crushing your plants. If this was dirt, you'd smash it. Oh. Look, you notice on, when you walk how buoyant it was? Yeah. Look at this. Look at that soil. Oh, pick that up, man. Oh, Check man. that out. Look at that soil, man. Come on. There's nothing you could buy or make to compare to that. And Look that's, at that. And that's so composted wood chips. That's all wow. that is. That's all it is. How many chips. years do you think it took? Every to get... year I do a layer. I know, but but you this can see this is getting to be a raised bed. But how mm -hmm. yeah, how so how long funny. do you think it takes for wood chips to get to this fine of a stage? Depending on the types of trees, yeah. some break down quicker than others. Okay. So it varies. But it's all going there. So the question is, how deep does it need to be in order well, just to Well, this just enough to cover. That's just enough saying. to get. So it doesn't take much because, like, look, look here. Four or five inches. No, no, like just an inch over the top. Okay. Because look, 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 it doesn't take a whole lot to do because watch when, when, when wood chips hit on, they lay down. So you're not, yeah. not going to raise it this high. So you don't chip, need a ton of wood no, chips. No, just a wood chips. When you dump it on top of it, it's drop and I just rake it out just enough to cover, and I'm good. Oh, okay. I did that. I did that last year, and I put too thick of them on and then they, the new shoots couldn't get through. Yeah, you want just the cover. Now, I want you to notice these are dwarf trees, yes. this plum. I want you to see the, these upright shoots mm -hmm. that are more than eight feet. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. That's one year's growth. Oh, wow. This is one year's growth. All the upright shoots is one year's growth. I'm just telling you, man, it's uh, these wood chips. Now, this is the, over there by the chickens mm -hmm. is that herb. The woman's herb, black coal hops. Black coal hops only grow these two trees. That was a that was in a quarter inch. And we're talking like a little tiny stick last year. This summer it had it had big white um, flowers, eight feet tall. And it's going in full sun. So it's so, oh you want you guys know anything about thyme the, the herb? Uh, uh, yes. Take a tiny piece. I'm talking tiny because you're gonna flip out of how strong that is. I'm talking tiny because it's gonna blow you away. You've never bought time in the store what? that strong. That's fine. Like, you just need one leaf. Yeah, it's potent. And this is the effect of minerals. Minerals make things potent. Yeah, that is. No. It's, it's, see, my wife it's used, kind she, of a lettuce almost. Yeah, so it's a little bit my wife is a, she's a midwife. She used all these herbs in her practice instead of drugs. Because wow. they're non-toxic. And they really affect them. You're growing your own herbs. Yeah, she grows all, all this stuff. See, now, there's the oregano. You might have to taste it and see how good it is. Huge. Oh, that's what they said so much. Beautiful. It's so bold. It's amazing. And you know what's you know what's blowing me away? See these strawberries here? Yep. This is not this is not an everberry. This is once a year a June berry. Yeah. You see this goofy thing that's coming out No. Look! It's those are strawberries. It doesn't Look know right how here. to act. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Strawberries. Well you want to see it, that should be a done in June. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, wow. is, this is what I'm seeing in this <laughs> they don't know how to stop. <laughs> They're completely going against their nature. It's the abundance. Abundance. It's just non stop. To give you an idea how big they get, there's one, uh, there's one over here. Let me see if it's still there. there was, it's, it was green, but it's just these things get like golf ball size. They're incredible. Yeah, no, but I'm talking one, big. Yeah. No, that's nothing. Nothing? That's tiny. Okay. Let me show you how what they normally get to do. Still here. 
he's used to the kind of things. Oh, that, yep, that's here it is. Look at that. Look at the size of this. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's just starting out. It's going to get bigger. It's not even red yet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is when they're green. Yeah. And this is October. I know. Not, not supposed <laughs> when, to be. When will it? Not be, supposed to be stopping. No. When will it be ready for and picking? And this, this is this has never been watered ever, or fertilized. That's amazing. Because wood chips feed it all. It's, it's awesome. It's all about the soil. All about the soil. Yeah. Got it. And the climate. No, no, not really. Well, climate. Yeah, you, you're, not I gonna, mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna do this. At, you know, 40 below zero. And well, right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. frozen tundra. But I mean, you have to have a temperate climate. But in within the where things grow. That's yeah, it's, 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 it's just awesome. And it's so simple. That's what I love about it. Wow, this thank is, you so no, much. There's absolutely no issues. This is important. There are no issues in nature. There's none. And all the issues we have is because we've taken the cover off the ground and depleted the soil. When the soil's nutrient dense, no issues. No issues. I want to get some of your water. You, yeah, you got to try that water. I want to try the water. And where is the pump? Can I look at your chickens? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's right by uh, that, that black pool. Well, I'm right in front of it. Oh, right front of the drinking it. fountain there. Okay. Yeah. I use that to grow basil because it won't won't do well in uh, it's too cold. Oh. You see, I have no roof on it. Yeah. Here's something. You, you, you know, all food in greenhouses have no no, no nutritional value. No, I didn't know that. Here's come here. This is huge. This is another thing that I grew up in Los Angeles in yeah. the 50s, and Los Angeles is a desert. Yeah. And I'm a Swiss German culture, I have a light skin, and I sunburn mm. every summer. We're talking like totally peel all the time. Mm. In the 50s, there was no such thing as skin cancer. It didn't exist. Huh. None. Nobody had it anywhere. Mm. Really? Because back in the 50s, all tomatoes were growing outside in the full sun. And that's what we ate. Yeah. They examined a sun-ripened tomato, they found 300 phytochemicals in the sun-ripened tomato. 300. Yes. You ever look at the tomato skin? Yeah. How beautiful and smooth it is. Any woman yeah. would give anything for that skin. Yeah. No yeah. bumps, no yeah. blisters. Right. And it takes direct sunlight, 100 degrees all day long, and it never blisters. Right. And the skin's no thicker than yours. Yeah, it's true. You know why? There's a phytochemical that protects the skin from blistering. Hmm. Here's what was huge. The same heirloom tomato grown in a greenhouse they tested. There's a use of vital content. Phyto um, vital content. Or Five, you know, um, how the content was? Mm. 50. Uh, 250 were lost with light going through glass because it interrupts oh, photosynthesis. Light going, through the glass light going through glass interrupts photosynthesis. Mm. I want you to hear me. Today in Seattle, where there's no sun, people have skin cancer. Mm. Skin cancer is rampant all over the world because today all tomatoes are growing in You got it, Dad. He's talking about, you hear what he said about skin cancer? No. He had a graft removed from his nose. Okay. Did you have? I got I'm going to repeat this for you because this is, this is hey, huge. You got to hear this. Back, yeah, in the, back, in the 50s, back in the 50s, I grew up in L.A., uh -huh. which is a desert. Uh -huh. And I come from a Swiss German culture, light skin. Uh -huh. And I'm outside, we're at the beach, we're surfing, and I sunburn all year long. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. like my skin is peeling constantly. Uh -huh. Back in the 50s, skin cancer did not exist. Nobody had it. Really? It didn't happen. You're old enough to know that. Well, I didn't realize it. It didn't happen. Okay. Think, of, think about your parents and your your aunts and uncles, your relatives, uh -huh. all your friends. No, S nobody ever had skin cancer. They didn't. Huh. And oh. here's why. All tomatoes were growing back in the, that time outside in full sun. All tomatoes. Uh -huh. they, they, if you look at tomato skin. Lycopene. You look at tomato skin, how thin mm -hmm. it is. Yep. It takes direct sunlight, 100 degrees all day long, and it never blisters. It stays mm -hmm. totally smooth. Mm -hmm. Any moment again, it's skin that nice. Yeah. There's a phytochemical that protects the skin from blistering. They tested the sun, an, air, an heirloom tomato in the greenhouse, the same one. You know how many phytochemicals there were? Mm -hmm. 50. 250 were lost with light going through glass because it interrupts photosynthesis. Today, all tomatoes are grown in greenhouses, all of them. And skin cancer is rampant all over the world because we're not getting the protection from the tomato. Here's, 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 amazing? See, this, this was even more amazing. When does the tomatoes get ripe? What time of year? Uh, right when the sun's hottest. August and yeah. September when the sun's the hottest. Yeah. You think that's a coincidence, yeah. an accident? <laughs> and here's what's interesting. Yeah. In climates where it's cold and there's no sun, tomatoes don't grow. Yeah. All right. You don't need it. it. You don't need it. Yeah. And what I'm getting is that all these things you're seeing in nature, 
mm. are interesting for the area you live in mm. and at the right season. Totally ingeniously designed. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's perfect. Mm. And here we're out there eating tomatoes in January. It's a nightshade. It's yeah. not good for you. And there's nothing in it. It doesn't even taste good. No. And you're buying this stuff? Yeah. And there's no sun? Yeah. It's insane how yeah. we live. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. It makes no sense. To eat food asparagus in their season. Asparagus is a classic. Another one. Asparagus. I love asparagus. Can I hear about asparagus? Yeah. When does asparagus show up in the garden? What time of year? Early spring. Er, you know why? What did early spring follow? What came before early spring? Winter. A winter when you had no greens. Right. You had no greens. And your body's craving greens. I really eat greens because you want to plant your garden because you're hungry for greens. Asparagus just pops up. I'll hold you over. If you notice eat asparagus, you go to the bathroom and urinate. That potent mineral yeah, odor definitely. that nothing else does. Yes. Nothing you eat does that. Yeah, I know. You know why? Asparagus sends roots in the ground 14 feet. Not inches. 14 feet wow. into the ground. And they're pulling at mineral content that no other produce even gets near. Mm. And when does the creator have it show up in nature? At the time of year you need it the most. Mm. April. Just tell me, mm. man. It's just when you look at the design and you connect the dots, you're just blown out mm. at the incredible order do you and pick, wisdom. In the, do you pick the asparagus all summer long or you just do it a little bit in the spring? Well, I, what happens here, I got, I got two rows. Mm -hmm. I get a full quart pot every other day, and by June I'm getting tired of it. I got other, other things in the garden. Do you pick it till June about, and then yeah, just I let it go? Yeah, I let it go. But I can tell you, I can get a fall crop where you live mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. A fall crop of asparagus, mm -hmm. which nobody has. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know how you get it? No. Nope. I had an accident. It opened me up how to get it. I'm pushing my wheelbarrow across my bed over here. I come along, and I, and I, and I hit one of them, one of these nice big ferns, and broke it off. So I went down and snapped off the crown. I came back in two days and there was a young spear coming out. No. Oh, and what I got was, you plant two asparagus beds. One you, one you harvest in the spring, the next you just let, immediately go to the ferns. And in August, you start snapping them off, you'll have asparagus all They'll fall. grow spears right after snap that? Because you see, when you break it off, that's a pruning process and it grows back. Hmm. When would you break them off? August? August. First of all, August, and you'll have, have all, two boxes and you'll have them all, you'll have them all fall. So it's just, again, I love these accidents you have that you don't think about if you pay attention. I'm like, wow, man, that works. Awesome. You know, so again, it's, this, this is the kind of stuff you won't see in books. No. But it's from experience, from living with it, from doing it. You just wake up and you get it. Yeah, and it's because of your, your being open and surrendering yeah, yeah, to God that, in your yes, life. I want to know. I ask. Yeah, yeah. You're a blessing to us. No, thank you. I really mean it. I just can't get over the soil. Isn't that oh, awesome? This is my favorite part of the whole. I mean, having worked with soil for. And did you five, see my six, soil back here? Now? Did you see my soil back there? No. You need to walk back there to check it out. Okay. Because especially after this, I've never seen I, I had a any, I had a guy. Any. Listen, I had, like, look at my soil I had back here. He was from, he was from um, Idaho. He came over here and he got did what you did, yeah. and he kept going down to his elbow. Huh. He's pulling up rocks, and he's flipping out because he saw my soil. And he says, "This is amazing. It's just incredible how the wood shifts change everything." Come back and check out my soil okay, because you have never seen soil this bad anywhere in the world. I heard about the fire you had start out here.
across the street, I'm seeing these six inch flames, <gasps> oh. six foot flames. He ran, ran to his garage, got a, got a fire, and he came over here and put it out. Mm. I'm just telling you, man, it's just awesome how I'm, I'm being watched over. Wow, well, yeah. Incredible. I want to see these chickens. Okay. Yeah, go check out. And, and again, look, look in that pen. Look at that amazing story. You can see what they're actually